Good morning. Good morning. And a warm welcome to church this morning. It's lovely to see you out. A um, couple of announcements just as we begin. As I have uh, been announcing the last two Sundays, we have a, the, the opportunity, if you'd like, to support Green Island Parish, uh, the bishop, in response to the fact that the church had sustained serious damage after a fire in Green Island Parish, the, the bishop asked that the diff, all the parishes of the Diocese of Connor would make uh, a contribution, a monetary contribution, to, so that the parish would know that not only are we in uh, their prayers, but we are also uh, uh, helping, trying to help them re reset uh, in the, their current circumstances. So that there is a retiring offering on every service between now and the end of the month uh, for our brothers and sisters in Green Island, and I would encourage you uh, to support that uh, if if you want. Um, now, uh, apart from that, services on Sunday, 11 o'clock, and that's uh, morning prayer. And this service uh, that uh, uh, will be uploaded onto YouTube at 9.30. So those of you who um, uh, aren't able to get out to church, uh, this will be the first service that's available to you when you're listening. Uh, and then the 11 o'clock one will be up later in the day. So that's that's all. Uh, oh, and I should also mention uh, to those of you here that the tractor, uh, tractor vintage vehicle run is this Saturday. And uh, if you look at the 11 bar one, you'll see the times are from four o'clock till half five, uh, leaving the, the church car park and going on quite a lot of the small country roads leading up to McGabry and then coming back uh, down uh, to, to the church. And uh, that, that's uh, in aid of the Royal National Lifeboat Institute, the RNLI, uh, and that has been run by our events committee. So that's this uh, f uh, Saturday afternoon. Um, so that's all I have by announcements. Let's uh, now turn to our order of service. And uh, for those of you that are following at home, it's page 180 of the Book of Common Prayer. And the readings are for the 17th Sunday after Trinity. Let's pray. Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts be open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear what our Lord Jesus Christ saith, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Lord, have mercy upon us, and write these thy laws in our hearts, we beseech thee. The church's prayer for the 17th Sunday after Trinity. Almighty God, you have made us for yourself, and our hearts are restless till they find their rest in you. Teach us to offer ourselves to your service, that here we may have your peace, and in the world to come may see you face to face, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The epistle is written in the third chapter of the letter of James, beginning to read at the 13th verse. Who is wise and understanding among you? Let them show it by their good life, by deeds done in the humility that comes from wisdom. But if you harbor bitter envy and selfish ambition in your hearts, do not boast about it or deny the truth. Such wisdom does not come down from heaven, but is earthly unspiritual, demonic. For where you have envy and selfish ambition, there you find disorder and every evil practice. But the wisdom that comes from heaven is first of all pure, then peace-loving, 
considerate, submissive, full of mercy and good fruit, impartial and sincere. Peacemakers who sow in peace reap a harvest of righteousness. What causes fights and quarrels among you? Don't they come from your desires that battle within you? You desire, but you do not have, so you kill. You covet, but you cannot get what you want, so you quarrel and fight. You do not have because you do not ask God. When you ask, you do not receive because you ask with wrong motives that you may spend what you get on your pleasures. Submit yourselves then to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Come near to God and he will come near to you. Wash your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. Here endeth the epistle. The Holy Gospel is written in the ninth chapter of the Gospel according to St. Mark, beginning to read at the 30th verse. Glory be to thee, O Lord. They left that place and passed through Galilee. Jesus did not want anyone to know where they were, because he was teaching his disciples. He said to them, The Son of Man is going to be delivered into the hands of men. They will kill him, and after three days he will rise. But they did not understand what he meant and were afraid to ask him about it. They came to Capernaum. When he was in the house, he asked them, What were you arguing about on the road? But they kept quiet, because on the way they had argued about who was the greatest. Sitting down, Jesus called the twelve and said, Anyone who wants to be first must be the very last and the servant of all. He took a little child whom he placed among them. Taking the child in his arms, he said to them, Whoever welcomes one of these little children in my name welcomes me, and whoever welcomes me does not welcome me, but the one who sent me. Thanks be to thee, O Lord. I believe in one God. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again according to the Scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sitteth on the right hand of the Father, and he shall come again with glory to judge both the quick and the dead, whose kingdom shall have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceedeth from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spake by the prophets. And I believe one Catholic and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins. And I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. In the name of the Father, and in the name of the Son, and through the power of the Holy Spirit, may I speak this morning, and our hearts be open to hear. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Those uh, are three, three very good readings. I didn't read uh, the first one, which is from Proverbs 31 and verses 10 to 31, uh, the, the characteristics of, of a noble wife. Um, but, it, but I would like us to focus today on the, the third reading, but the second really does um, relate uh, into it. We, we are all very familiar, I am sure, with the saying, it's, it's better to give than to receive. In fact, every uh, Wednesday, when we use this old order of service, the words of offering um, are read, uh, and they are Acts 20 and verse 35. 
which are, remember the words of the Lord Jesus, how he said, it is more blessed to give than to receive. And Jesus said those words, and like a lot of the words that uh, he said, when people actually do research on them, they find uh, they, they are, when the social sciences just do, they find they're actually backed up uh, by, by research, uh, those kind of people that maybe don't come to church. And it would be, it might be a surprise to you that it is, according to research, better to give than to receive. And uh, those of us who are, who seek to be kind and compassionate experience uh, clear benefits uh, to, to that in our lives uh, in terms of well-being and happiness. And, um, and kindness uh, also apparently uh, um, by the social sciences helps reduce stress and also impact our emotional well-being. And um, we all have so much going on in our lives and that, that's uh, maybe a very blasé thing to say because we all hear it and we all think it. But, um, and we have so many competing strains and stresses on them. And not to mention in recent times the pandemic and the lockdowns and uh, folks still dealing with the consequences of that in terms of their emotional well-being. Stress and strains in life can, can see us push kindness to, to one side and as, as the, the pressures of life uh, manifest themselves in us in shortness uh, to other people and anger. Um, and, and, uh, and, and pushing other people away from us uh, in, in favour of what is urgent now and in favour of uh, what we perceive to be as looking after ourselves. And in the online age as well, it's uh, incredibly easy uh, to show kindness when responding to a post online. And, and I think that's a feature that many of us in the past would never have had to deal with um, because the reality is that um, in the real world it can be an awful lot more difficult uh, to commit to, to kindness in, in our real life words and actions. By taking the time to be kind to others we are blessed. Remember the words of the Lord Jesus how he said it is more blessed to give than to receive. And it really does make a difference, especially, I think, uh, for people who are vulnerable or struggling. With everything that's going on in the world, now I believe is the time uh, to help make a kinder, uh, gentler society that does impact in so many beneficial ways to all of those around us. So as we gather this morning in church, and for those of you um, who will stay on to the friendship group, you know, um, I think uh, that those of you that do stay on to the friendship group, kindness is, is literally key, isn't it? If I asked you to give me examples of kindness uh, in that particular situation, the friendship group on a Wednesday morning, uh, I, I know that you would be able to list off uh, a whole lot. And some of them, some folk might say, well, I got a lift to church today. And I know that's becoming an issue for quite a few members of our congregation uh, on a Wednesday and a Sunday. And given that the, the church is three miles from the, um, the centre of Lisburn and surrounded by fields, sharing transport is an obvious example of kindness in action, enabling people to be part of uh, the church uh, family. So I bring the subject of kindness up because in today's scripture reading, uh, in, in both uh, the James one and uh, the Mark one, uh, the subject of kindness, um, I think, is very much there. We hear that Jesus' disciples seem to have forgotten uh, that they need each other's help. They, they have forgotten about being kind and gentle one to another. And we know that they've forgotten that they need each other's help because they have been having an argument about who is the greatest and who is the best amongst them. And thinking about being the greatest and the best is surely uh, a prime example about thinking uh, uh, 
how well that you can do things on your own by yourself because if others are helping you do something then you obviously aren't the greatest and the best individual which is why Jesus must remind his disciples when he gets an opportunity to discuss with them he reminds them uh, Jesus says being the best and the greatest does not welcome me or God into your life listen again to the the uh, the verses from 33 onwards they came to Capernaum when he was in the house so he's got a moment to talk to them uh, he asked them what were you arguing about on the road but they kept quiet because on the way they had argued about who was the greatest sitting down Jesus called the 12 and said anyone who wants to be first must be the last and the servant of all he took a little child whom he placed up among them taking the child in his arms he said to them whoever welcomes one of these little children in my name welcomes me and whoever welcomes me does not welcome me but the one who sent me in other words Jesus is telling the disciples what they seem to have forgotten in their haste to be the number one disciple they need to be kind and gentle to one another that they that they they need each other's help and, in, and that in being competitive they've forgotten about being one uh, the, being kind one to another there's a lovely illustration that I remember from uh, doing an SU camp in Petora grounds uh, in the summer oh way back in the 90s and it was a 10 or 11 year old boy and uh, he said something incredibly profound being a Christian is like being one of the knights at the round table it's a round table no one sits in the top seat and we are all equal before God that little child and that image has, has stayed with me all my life and uh, and uh, uh, Jesus is telling them to stop trying to act if as if they need no help and will take no help or give no help because they want to be number one he is saying that those of us who follow the advice of Jesus to be kind and compassionate people will be, will be blessed. And uh, he's, he's encouraging us, I think, to be intentional in our behavior uh, as, 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 we, as we lead our lives. Jesus is calling us to be people who know that we could, uh, that we could use help from time to time and that we should give help wherever we encounter need. We shouldn't be trying uh, to place ourselves uh, in that uh, uh, number one spot, so to speak. Offering help may seem like a simple thing to do, being kind, but it's an important thing for all of us to remember and to practice. Accepting help may seem like a simple thing to do, but it's an important thing for all of us to remember and to practice. Because in accepting help, even when we think we don't need it, we're allowing somebody else to be kind to us and they're having the blessing in their lives of being appreciated when we know we need help and ask for it then we are much better at accepting that help and I think uh, for me that's so important so I'm going to say it again maybe in a slightly different way as I draw this ser sermon to a close or this talk to a close when we need when we know we need God's help then we are much better at accepting God's help and when we do accept God's help, then our best will become even better because we can offer God's help to each other. We can be kind, gentle, compassionate and understanding. Thanks be to God for his word. Let's pray. Father, we thank you this morning for, for Jesus and his teaching. We pray, Lord, that in our day ahead, we may indeed uh, be the disciples that Jesus would have us be, uh, being kind, compassionate, considerate and caring of one another. In Jesus' name, amen. And now we come to those words again. Uh, remember the words, Lord Jesus, how he said, it is more blessed to give than to receive.
Father, we give unto you which is yours. And pray, Lord, to be used in your service. In Jesus' name. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, who by thy holy apostle has taught us to make prayers and supplications and to give thanks for all people, we humbly beseech thee most mercifully to accept our alms and oblations and to receive these our prayers which we offer unto thy divine majesty, beseeching thee to inspire continually the universal church with the spirit of truth, unity, and concord, and grant that all they that confess thy holy name may agree in the truth of thy holy word and live in unity and godly love. We beseech thee also to save and defend all Christian kings, princes, and governors, and especially thy servant Charles, our king, that under him we may be godly and quietly governed, and grant unto his whole counsel and to all that are put in authority under him that they may truly and impartially minister justice to the punishment of wickedness and vice, and to the maintenance of thy true religion and virtue. Give grace, O Heavenly Father, to all bishops, presbyters, and deacons, that they may both by their life and doctrine set forth thy true and lively word, and rightly and duly administer thy holy sacraments. And to all thy people give thy heavenly grace, and especially to this congregation here present that with meek heart and due reverence they may hear and receive thy holy word, truly serving thee in holiness and righteousness all the days of their life. And we most humbly beseech thee of thy goodness, O Lord, to comfort and succor all them who in this transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity. And we also bless thy holy name for all thy servants departed this life in thy faith and fear beseeching thee to give us grace so to follow their good examples, that with them we may be partakers of thy heavenly kingdom. Grant this, O Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. Ye that do truly and earnestly repent of your sins and are in love and charity with your neighbors and intend to lead a new life following the commandments of God and walking from henceforth in his holy ways, draw near with faith and take this holy sacrament to your comfort and make your humble confession to Almighty God, meekly kneeling upon your knees. Almighty God, Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all men. We acknowledge and bewail our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed by thought, word, and deed against thy divine majesty, provoking most justly thy wrath and indignation against us. We do earnestly repent and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings. The remembrance of them is grievous unto us, the burden of them is intolerable. Have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. For thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please thee in newness of life to the honor and glory of thy name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our... Heavenly Father, who of his great mercy has promised forgiveness of sins to all them that with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto him, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear what comfortable words our Saviour Christ saith unto all that truly turn unto him. Come unto me, all that travail and are heavy laden, and I will refresh you. So God loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son to the end that all that believe in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Hear also what St. Paul saith. This is a true saying and worthy of all men to be received, that Christ Jesus come into the world to save sinners. 
Hear also what St. John saith, If any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the propitiation for our sins. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up unto the Lord. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It is meet and right so to do. It is very meet, right, and our bounden duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, almighty, everlasting God. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Glory be to thee, O Lord most high. Amen. We do not presume. We do not presume to come to this thy table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in thy manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under thy table, but thou art the same Lord, whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls washed through his most precious blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him, and he in us. Amen. And the prayer of thanksgiving. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of thy tender mercy does give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made there by his one oblation of himself once offered a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world, and did institute and in his holy gospel command us to continue a perpetual memory of that his precious death, until his coming again. Hear us, O merciful Father, we most humbly beseech thee, and grant that we, receiving these thy creatures of bread and wine, according to thy Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood, who in the same night that he was betrayed took bread, and when he had given thanks, he brake it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this, for this is my blood to the New Testament, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as oft as ye shall drink it in remembrance of me. of our Lord Jesus Christ that was given for thee. Preserve thy body and soul and everlasting life. Take and eat this in remembrance that Christ died for thee and feed on him in thy hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Amen. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ that was given for thee. Preserve thy body and soul and everlasting life. Take and eat this in remembrance that Christ died for thee and feed on him in thy hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Amen. blood of our Lord Jesus Christ that was shed for thee. Preserve thy body and soul unto everlasting life. Drink this in remembrance that Christ's blood was shed for thee. And be thankful. Amen. The blood of our Lord Jesus Christ that was shed for thee. Preserve thy body and soul unto everlasting life. Drink this in remembrance that Christ's blood was shed for thee. And be thankful. Amen. 
the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ that was shed for thee, preserve thy body and soul and everlasting life. Drink this in remembrance that Christ's blood was shed for thee, and be thankful. And the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ that was shed for thee, preserve thy body and soul and everlasting life. Drink this in remembrance that Christ's blood was shed for thee, and be thankful. Amen. body of our Lord Jesus Christ that was given for thee. Preserve thy body and soul unto everlasting life. Take and eat this in remembrance that Christ died for thee, and feed on him in thy heart by faith with thanksgiving. Amen. In the body of our Lord Jesus Christ that was given for thee, preserve thy body and soul unto everlasting life. Take and eat this in remembrance that Christ died for thee, and feed on him in thy heart by faith with thanksgiving. Amen. blood of our Lord Jesus Christ that was shed for thee, preserve thy body and soul unto everlasting life. Drink this in remembrance that Christ's blood was shed for thee, and be thankful. Amen. The blood of our Lord Jesus Christ that was shed for thee, preserve thy body and soul unto everlasting life. Drink this in remembrance that Christ's blood was shed for thee, and be thankful. The blood of our Lord Jesus Christ that was shed for thee, preserve thy body and soul unto everlasting life. Drink this in remembrance that Christ's blood was shed for thee, and be thankful. Amen. The blood of our Lord Jesus Christ that was shed for thee, Preserve thy body and soul unto everlasting life. Drink this in remembrance that Christ's blood was shed for thee, and be thankful. Amen. of our Lord Jesus Christ that was given for thee. Preserve thy body and soul unto everlasting life. Take and eat this in remembrance that Christ died for thee. And feed on him in thy heart by faith with thanksgiving. Amen. In the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ that was shed for thee, preserve thy body and soul unto everlasting life. Drink this in remembrance that Christ's blood was shed for thee. And be thankful. Amen. Let us pray. Our Father, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. 
Almighty and ever-living God, we most heartily thank thee for that thou dost fight safe to feed us, who have duly received these holy mysteries with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of thy Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ, and dost assure us thereby of thy favour and goodness towards us, and that we are very members incorporate in the mystical body of thy Son, which is the blessed company of all faithful people, and are also heirs through hope of thy everlasting kingdom, by the merits of the most precious death and passion of thy dear Son. And we most humbly beseech thee, O Heavenly Father, so do assist us with thy grace, that we may continue in that holy fellowship and do all such good works as thou hast prepared for us to walk in. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Spirit be honour and glory, worlds without end. Amen. We stand together as we share together in the canticle Gloria in Excelsis. Glory be to God on high. Glory be to God on high. And in earth peace, goodwill towards men. We praise thee, we bless thee, we worship thee, we glorify thee. We give thanks to thee for thy great glory. O Lord God, heavenly King, God the Father Almighty. O Lord, the only begotten Son, Jesus Christ. O Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. Thou that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. Thou that takest away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. Thou that sittest at the right hand of God the Father, have mercy upon us. For thou only art holy, thou only art the Lord, thou only, O Christ, with the Holy Spirit, art most high in the glory of God the Father. Amen. And may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen.